Currently, I'm in the prototyping stage of a new project, which is a GPS LoRa tracker. I've made about 80% of the project work. I've tested the firmware and connected the relevant breakout boards and dev boards. As you can see, it is indeed a mess out here with the breadboards and jumper wires. So now I need to clean up all the connections, make it small and make it into a form factor that is portable to perform its core function, which is a GPS tracker. Hence in today's video, I want to share about taking the next step, which is to create electrical schematic that will eventually lead to manufacturing a small custom PCB. Now we can already find many resources on how to create a schematic or even read a schematic, but I felt this specific step of converting a breadboard prototype with the dev boards and breakout boards into electrical schematic and even digging in deeper into each of the dev boards was missing. Now I admit in the beginning, it can be a little daunting to stare at the blank piece of schematic paper with just the title blocks. And that's why I want to share how I do it. And hopefully all of you can also improve upon what I want to share next. So the first step in creating the electrical schematic is to replicate what we have with the breadboard and dev boards. We will create a new schematic symbol for each of the dev boards, arrange them in simple logical blocks, and then dig deeper component by component. In this example, we have four dev boards or four parts, the microcontroller, the GPS, the LoRa, and the e-ink module. As an example, let's create a schematic symbol for this LoRa module by Adafruit. In KiCad, we can create a new schematic symbol by clicking uh, this one, uh, this application, which is the symbol editor. Inside the symbol editor, we will go to file and then new library and a little bit of description, which is Laura in this case. And I'll put it as a project. Now, once you search for the library name, we will see that an empty library will be created. And here we can create new symbol and I'll name it as something similar, Adafruit RFM 9X followed by the function name and the rest as default, press OK. And here we will see an empty new schematic symbol being created. As the next step, we will refer to the pinout of this dev board or a breakout board. So in total, there are about 14 pins and one antenna. So I'm gonna create a number one and call it V in and it is pin number one. It is a power input. Similarly, pin two is ground and it is also a power input. Pin three is enable and I will just put it as input. Pin four, five, six, seven are the SPI pins. Pin five is MISO, which is an output. Pin six is MOSI, which is an input. Pin seven is chip select. Pin eight is reset. Pin nine is an interrupt request pin. I'm not sure whether it's input or output, so I'm just gonna put it as di bi-directional. And there are five more pins, G1 to G5. So let me add the five pins. And just one more pin, which is the antenna number 15. So once we have all the 15 pins, let's first arrange the positive voltages. In this case, it's just V in. So I'm gonna put V in at the top and ground at the bottom. Now, generally the input pins can come from the left so that there's a logical flow input on the left and output towards the right. But sometimes functionally, we need to put the pins together. For example, all these four SPI pins, I'm just gonna put it on the left. And similarly, all the G0 to G5 pins, I'm just gonna rotate it as well and put them on the right. And maybe the reset pin after the SPI pins. Now I will take this rectangle tool and create a box, something like this. And let me right click it, edit rectangle options and fill it with a background color. So there you see my first dev board schematic symbol is ready. So similarly, I have created the three other dev boards that I've used in this project. The first one is the Robodyne M0 Mini, which is based out of Sam D21G microcontroller. As for the GPS module, this is CD top by PA1010D. I've also created a symbol for it. And finally, for the e-ink module, it is the WaveShare 1.5 inch e-paper. Each of these dev boards are something that we use the same exact one for prototyping each of the time. But when we manufacture a PCB, we buy new components to populate them. Hence, it is important we create the schematic symbol for reusability so that we can use it not just once for the current project, but also multiple times in future projects. 
To reuse each of these schematic symbols, I maintain a single folder where all the schematic symbols are placed, of course, along with the footprint layouts and 3D models later on. And here there are plenty of them, including the LoRaWAN module that I made. So let's say in my current KiCad folder, which contains the KiCad project, the KiCad schematic, I can acquire this exact Git repository. So first, let me copy the URL. So next, we can simply do git submodule add, and then the git URL followed by the folder where I want the entire submodule to be located. So let me press enter. Well, it says not a git repository, of course, because I need to initialize the current one. So let me do git in it. And now I can add the folder as a submodule. So it is cloning. And now notice that there will be a library folder. And if I list what's inside the library, it is exactly the same as my KiCad library folder, which I got from GitHub. So now when I come back to my KiCad project, I can go to preferences and manage symbol libraries. And under here, I can go to specific uh, project libraries. Let's first add the Robodyne microcontroller and we can choose the library folder and we can choose the schematic symbol. Now you see that there is a shortcut here or the path substitution. So I'm going to copy this and replace it like this. So now you see it is under the library symbols and then the schematic symbol name. Let me similarly add three more. This is for the GPS. This is for the LoRaWAN. And finally, the WaveShare e-ink module. So now that I've imported all the four inside, I can simply click OK. And when I open the schematic layout editor, which is completely empty as of now, I can click the place symbol. So let me first place the Robodyne microcontroller. One more time, the GPS module, the LoRaWAN, and finally the WaveShare e-ink module. So at this point of time, these four schematic symbols are exactly the four dev boards that I've used in my breadboard prototyping. So now that we have all the four major schematic symbols ready, we can now integrate them into our electrical schematics and we can put them and arrange them according to the flow of power and logic blocks and finally end it off with some electrical rules check. Now, because these are dev boards, sometimes I do like to add in some image as well, which could be helpful in describing the dev board. So let me place an image for the first dev board. And in this case, it is a pinout diagram of the MCU. So let me just rotate it and just make it a little bit smaller. I'll also rotate the microcontroller just so that it is a little bit more readable. Like for example, all the analog pins are on the left and all the analog pins on the diagram are also on the left. Similarly, I also have a pinout diagram of the GPS module. So once again, place image. And I'm going to grab this image and edit it to half the size and just about this. So the first thing I like to do is arrange these four modules according to the flow of power. Obviously, in this case, the power is coming from the microcontroller. So I'm going to put it at the top left hand corner. Now the LoRa GPS and the e-ink modules are taking their power directly to the microcontroller. So it doesn't really matter where I put them. So the next thing we will do is focus on the power pins and the ground pins. So I will put a five volt supply here, which is for the micro USB. And we also need to put a power flag to indicate it is driving. And let me just draw the wires. As for the rest of the power pins, I'm not using them. So I'm just going to put no connect. Similarly, let's go to the ground pins and I am going to put a common ground here and let's connect them up. I am not using the SWD ground and the ICSP ground. So I'm going to no connect them. So similarly, let's come to the PA1010D. Now in this case, the VCC is not five volts. It is 3.3 volts. And I'm going to add a power flag too. And finally, I'm also going to put the ground as for V backup. I'm not using it. So let's do the same for the LoRa module. So I'm just going to connect the 3.3 volts and the ground. We don't need to put the power flag because we have already put the power flag for one of the grounds as well as 3.3 uh, volts. Well, guess what? I did not put for the ground. So let me put one power flag for the ground. And finally, let's go to the WaveShare e-ink module, 3.3 volts and ground. So now that the power and ground pins are settled, let's go into the functionalities. 
The cheapest is connecting via the UART pins, especially the TX pin. So let me create a data label called GPS data and connect it to TX. In the meantime, I am not using the RX pin, so I'm just gonna pull it up via a resistor, something like this. Now the TX of the GPS is connected to the RX of the microcontroller. So let me add the same data label here and connect it up. So we are not using any other pins for GPS, so let's add a no connect pin for the rest. Let's move on to the LoRa module. So I'm gonna add a LoRa reset label. We are using the clock, but because this is one of the two SPI devices, I'm just gonna simply name it as clock, MISO as MISO, because it is also once again sharing the SPI bus, MOSI as well. But chip select is very specific to LoRa only. So I'm gonna label it as LoRa chip select. And once I connect up all the wires, we see that enable pins not used. So I'm gonna put a no connect here. So for the LoRa pins, let's connect them up to the microcontroller. So D5 is LoRa chip select as what I have prototyped on my hardware breadboard. D6 is LoRa reset. And here are the other SPI pins. So let me add the data labels, MOSI, CLOCK, and MISO. And let me connect up all of them. So those were the five LoRa pins that I'm using and they are connected to the LoRa module. And finally, let's go to the WaveShare e-ink module. So this will be the e-ink reset pin. E-ink chip select among the SPI pins is also unique and not shared among the other SPI lines, but clock is, so I'm just gonna name it as clock, and so is MOSI. And similarly, there is busy as well as DC. And let me just connect them up with the wires. Looks like the wave share does not have any other empty pins, so no connect is not required. So now we have to come back to the microcontroller and connect the data labels for the e-ink here. Starting with e-ink busy, e-ink reset, e-ink DC, and e-ink chip select as part of the SPI lines. And let me connect them up with the wires. All right, looks like we have connected all the pins. As a last thing, let's annotate them. So I prefer annotating uh, them by the Y position. So annotate. So notice U1 will be the microcontroller and then U2 GPS and then it will come down to U3 LoRaWAN and U4 will be the wave share. So as a final thing, we should do the electrical rules check. So I'm gonna click this ladybug symbol and there'll be lots of bugs, I'm sure. So let's run it. So there's a lot of no connect flags. So if I'm not using the pin, let's not connect them explicitly with this symbol. And of course, KiCad has pointed them out. So let me run this once again. Okay, lots of uh, less errors now. And we can sort of click them to see where exactly is the problem. Okay, I have not uh, put the no connect symbol in the LoRaWAN. Sorry, I am using the G0. So let me delete the G0. And instead, let me create a data label, G0. And I am actually using it as a TXD1. So let me delete the no connect here and put LoRa G0 here. Once again, electrical rules check. Wow, only a couple more. So let's see what is this. Aha, it is the antenna. I forgot to put a symbol here. So let me put the antenna, search for an antenna symbol. And let me edit this to say antenna 915 megahertz. That's the LoRaWAN frequency that I am using in my country. I'm just gonna connect it. So once again, let's see, what is the last one? Oh, annotation is required, of course, for this one, antenna, th the new symbol that I added. So annotate should be just AE1. Once again, run it, and there's just one more unconnected. What's wrong with it? Sorry, that's because there is no such label as SCK. I've named it as CLK. Let's try it one last time. All right, so looks like our electrical rules check has worked. Now, one last thing I would like to do, just as an aesthetic, is to draw rectangles around each of the components. So let me do that very quickly. Now, I like to put the rectangular boxes so that it is visually readable. And finally, I also like to put a graphical text. So the first one will simply be microcontroller and slightly bigger font. The second one is simply GPS. The third one is LoRa, and the last one is e-ink. All right, so that's how it looks like. It is simply a replication of the breadboard prototype that I have here with the four main components and all the connections that I did with the messy wires, they're all neatly labeled here. So one last time, electrical rules check, none, it's all fine and finished. 
crucial concepts that I've ever learned in engineering is an abstraction. In today's video, the abstraction layer stops at the level of dev boards and breakout boards. And that is completely fine if our project scope requires that. At this step, we can make a custom PCB where only dev boards are used. And guess what? I have done that before for previous projects. But for this current project, I require a smaller PCB that takes away the complexities or even some extra features that comes with the dev board. In the next video, we will cover exactly this. So gather all the data sheets, the schematics and the pinout diagram so that we can extend the current schematic into a further detailed one. So until then, see you in part two. Thanks for watching.